We've been doing resume reviews the last few weeks, and I wanted to go over some of the biggest mistakes that I get. Are you self-employed? Are you a freelancer? Maybe you're just unemployed using the title freelancer. It's okay, I believe in you. You'll get there, keep up the side hustle. But on your resume, you're definitely none of those things. You are not an owner. You're definitely not a CEO. You are an employee doing a specific job at a specific company. I mean, think about it. If you are the person hiring, why is a CEO looking for another job? Why is the owner of a company looking for another job? What's going on with the current company? Why do they have to jump ship? Are they bored? The CEO just going to give up the company? Like, you know, it's just a red flag. This is what that would look like. Some people like to say owner and freelance web developer or owner and CEO or whatever. What you want to do is just delete all of that. You are a position in this case. You're a developer and then you will be at the company. Not my company. No indication that you own it. Just position at company. That's it. Stop saying that you're a CEO and an owner thinking that they're going to look at you and go, wow, because they're going to look at you and go, what's wrong with, with, the, with their business? Why do they need it? our money? But you get it, right? You're not self-employed on your resume. Next up, we have skill bars. Stop using skill bars. I don't know the person who created skill bars, but they probably still don't have a job because they make no sense. But like, let me give you an example. I'm actually seven out of 18 bananas in programming. That's what skill bars look like to employers. It's also arbitrary. Why would you rate yourself anything other than, yes, I can do this job? Let me play out two scenarios for you. In scenario one, you apply with your resume that has a skill bar filled up with 35% JavaScript. They get your resume and they throw it in the trash because you don't have enough JavaScript self-admittedly because you're trying to be honest or whatever. Now, scenario two, let's say you apply without the random bar and just put that you have JavaScript, just the skill itself. They bring you in, you take a code test, you get the job, that's it. Here's an example of skill bars that I got on a resume the other day. So Python, here we have a bar with no units, two plus years. So here we have bash at two years. So does that mean that the rest of this empty bar here, does that mean that that's the plus years? You don't need to have 100% of every skill. You just need the required amount of skill to get the job done. You're not being paid based on how filled up these skill bars are. If that were true, people that never left college would be the richest people, you know? They just have endless amounts of qualifications, or people on LinkedIn, rather. And one other thing here, don't list skills like good listener or attention to detail. They are not skills, they are expected. Another thing I get here are people that list their skills, but don't list everything they know. They're doing themselves a disservice. They think because, oh, I haven't done enough with that, I can't put that on my resume. You don't know. Maybe enough with that is exactly what this next company needs from you. Like, here's an example. It's pretty terrible, but just to prove my point, do you know Microsoft Office or do you know Microsoft Word? Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint. Which one sounds better on paper, right? That's what the resume is all about. You got to build yourself up. Now, everyone should know Microsoft Office by this point, so don't use that one, but you get what I'm saying. Really expand your skills. Think about, do you, do you know this one word or, you know, could you break that apart into a few different skill sets? So the next one is about their education section and their GPA. There are some career paths that require a high GPA just to get to it. Like in the medical field, you got to have a high GPA to get the next degree, and then you can finally get into the medical field. There are certain scenarios, but there are a lot of other careers that they don't really care about that so much. Like software development is, is a big one. So if you're sweating about it, it's not a big deal. Like in my opinion, only put your GPA on there if it's required or if it's really something to write home about. The point is that grades aren't everything. I mean, if they do matter, depending on the field you're in, they more so only matter early on in your career. Another mistake that a lot of people make is writing a Game of Thrones novel in their little about yourself area, the little summary area up at the top. This would be one or two sentences max. Here's an example of what I mean. So first off, this biography, it's not supposed to be a biography on a resume ever. It should be a summary and it should be a couple sentences. This is just too long. Keep it short and simple. I would love to work in either this and this. That's great. Apply for it then. Why are you telling me? Like, I'm not trying to be rude, but this is way too long. Do not write a novel about where you grew up, what you do in your free time, just who you are and what you can do for this company to make it more money. You're probably like, but Josh, what about my hobbies and my interests? Some companies want to know about that. Hobbies and interests usually only matter if it's a small, tiny company, tight-knit group of people and they want to get to know you, and some little small startup vibes. Your hobbies also might matter if the company is a business that is involved in your hobby. So if you like to rock climb and you want to work for a rock climbing company, you know, then you could probably talk about how you also like to do the thing that this is, you know, you're working for here. Now, another one, dates starting college. If you're in the U.S., 
it's pretty easy to guess someone's age if they put on their resume when they started college. You get out of high school here in the U.S. at about 17 or 18 years old. You go to college, and then about four years later, oh, you're 21, you get a job. Now, why does this matter? Why does it matter if they know how old you are? Well, age gives away experience usually, so be prepared for people to try and take advantage of that. If you're young, this could mean offers below what they would have offered you without knowing your age, without assuming an experience level. Here's a snippet of someone's education where they put the month and the year to today. So we pretty much know exactly how old they are. Not only that, we can now judge them if they don't finish college fast enough. If they take longer than expected, eh, now you're going to get judged on that too because you've revealed it to me. What you want to do is put your expected graduation date or the last date that you were in college. That is it. You can talk about the rest in the interview. Another one I see all the time are people putting internships on their resume, which is fine if your internship was a few months. But if you've been an intern at a company for six months, nine months, multiple internships for six to nine months, take that off. Because at that point, I think you're a part-time employee. And they're just using the title intern to not bring you on full-time or to pay you less money. Seriously, you're doing yourself a disservice by putting intern when you don't have to. As soon as you can take it off, take it off. All right, the next section is job titles. In general, job titles can be verified, but the experience within that job title cannot. Only just on paper what the last company said that you were, that you worked there. It doesn't even mean that you did that thing. That's just what that company labeled you as. Sometimes companies can mislabel you and give you job titles uh, just to give you less money because that's how they do it at their company. Point is here, change your job title within reason to make you look good. Like for example, are you a junior software developer, but you've been with your company for three or four years, they just don't want to promote you because that means they'll have to give you more money? Well, maybe on your resume, drop junior. Now next up, pictures. Don't put a picture of what you look like on your resume, okay? Because in my opinion, it doesn't matter what you look like to do the job, usually, okay? Within reason, before everyone freaks out. Like, yeah, you should look the part of whatever job you're doing, but it should not matter otherwise what you look like, you know, race, gender, all these things, right? That's why you don't put a picture because people have an internal bias, whether they want to admit it or not. People can be prejudiced, racist, bigoted, just generally pieces of crap to other people purely based on how they look. And I wish it didn't have to be this way, but it is what it is. So if you can avoid it, don't put your picture on your resume. If you want to, usually they ask for LinkedIn and they can go there and see your picture if you have it, but don't put it. And now, okay, this is the caveat. If you're in Europe watching this video, just disregard everything I said about pictures because it doesn't matter. In the EU, they want a picture of you. It's the weirdest thing. It's so weird. I had to do it when I was in Finland. And okay, thank you for coming to my TED Talk rant over. In the US, don't put a picture. In the EU, <laughs> they're weird. <laughs> my philosophy with resumes and applying to jobs is if you read the job description and you think you can do it, apply. If you read the job description and you think you can learn to do it at work, apply, right? That means they're paying you to learn, and that's going to be fantastic. Of course, this philosophy has some inherent limits, like if you're a surgeon, right? Oh, I think I can learn to do that at work. That's fine. I'll learn how to do brain surgery on the job, right? Obviously, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Use it where you think it applies, but if you think you have the credentials and you can do this job, but maybe you're missing a couple checkboxes here or there, go ahead and apply. If you think you can learn to do this job at work and they're willing to pay you for it, if, or you think you can convince them to let you learn at work, then apply. Why not? Start a conversation. Obviously, if the job legally requires that you have credentials to do it that you don't have, then don't apply. But here's the thing that a lot of people don't get about job applications. Um, they can change at any point in time during the hiring process, interview process, the requirements section, you know, the, that section that looks like law to you, it's not. It's, it's more of a wish list. There's been plenty of times I've not met requirements for certain jobs I've held and they've decided to put those requirements to the side like they never existed. But for some of you, those requirements stop you from even applying. And that's the problem here. You need to apply regardless if you meet the requirements, right? Again, be reasonable here. Don't go too crazy with it. But if you think like, wait, hold on. You don't need this to be able to do this job. What is, what, what is this company talking about? And then you apply anyways. There are some people who get upset when I tell people to apply anyways, because they go, Josh, you're telling people to lie about requirements they didn't have and say to apply. Okay, look, job requirements change all the time in real life. That's, that's how it goes. These things are not law. You're not breaking the law by going, oh, I'm applying and I don't have two years and I said I did. Ah! Because they can change what they decide the requirement should be. Oh. 
We put two, but he's got this. That's good enough. They could change it just for you on the spot, just like that. It happens all the time. So don't feel bad. These are the things that your college job prep coach aren't going to tell you. They're just, they're just going to tell you what they tell everyone else. Do this, this, and this to stand out. But they say that to everyone, so everyone does it and no one stands out. I'm telling you what no one else wants to say out loud pretty much. That's the whole channel. And if you like that sort of vibe, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Click that like button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm sure there are a few things that I missed. In no way has this been a comprehensive list of things everyone must do every time on their resume. You know, as usual, take what I say with a grain of salt and use it where you think it applies to you. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.